I'm Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town Show. I'm with Bretty Page, and she's a pinup model. Is that what you'd call it? Absolutely. Uh, a, a vintage uh, aficionado, and just what a package. <laughs> <laughs> You're very kind. We did a, uh, a photo shoot together uh, about a week ago, and uh, you wore this uh, dress that just knocked me out. I mean, I, you know, I just stopped and I go, look at what is this? And of what you do is just really amazing. And just this whole, uh, you make vintage look absolutely so fresh and new and, and desirable and glamorous. So who are you and what is it that you do in your art Thank form? you so much, first of all. My uh, stage name is Bretty Page. Yes. Uh, my real name is Brett Page, so that was an easy, That's easy. pun. That w Everyone a loves a good and pun. And then explain who Betty Page was so people kind of sure. know the, so, the connection. So Betty Page, who, you know, my pinup persona actually looks nothing like, um, was an iconic pinup from the 40s and 50s who was made popular by Bunny Yeager and the work of Irving Claw. And she just had this uh, fresh-faced, really iconic beauty that was uh, a wonderful juxtaposition to some of the, the naughtier, more fetish-style uh, images that they shot together. So she was, you know, but she always said it was good, clean fun. So just having the similar name, that must have, is, did that get you to it kind of in a, in a weird way? Or did, how did that come about? Because this is pretty uncanny. It, it was a complete accident, actually. Yeah. So I've collected vintage clothing since I was um, 15 years old. I'm 43 now. And um, so, uh, and I've been a swing dancer since I was around 15 years old as well um, with uh, Lindy Hop and 1930s jazz styles. And my husband, Jim, has a classic car. And as we know, pinups and classic cars go together like peas and carrots. Um, so one day, um, a friend of mine who works at Costco of all places said, they're having a pinup contest in Castroville and you love vintage clothing and you love that look, you should go enter it. So I threw my hair up on a whim and I put on one of my favorite dresses and Jim entered his truck in the car show and I entered the pinup contest and I won my very <laughs> first pinup contest. Um, and everything just kind of started from there. After that, there was a photo shoot and I really discovered that um, when I came on stage, I just became this completely different human being, um, uh, a total ham and I came alive and it's, it's been, you know, my great joy ever since. You didn't even know this existed in you. I didn't know it existed in me. It That's was, so cool. It was really, really fun. Um, let's go back to your grandma. Let's start, sure. let's start at the beginning of the let's beginning. Let's start at the beginning. Yeah. Absolutely. So I had this amazing grandma named Rita, um, which is great because my favorite pinup of all time is Rita Hayworth. Of course. Um, you know, she was such a triple threat, a dancer, an actress, a singer. But my grandma Rita um, was a master quilter and she could get uh, 13 stitches in an inch, which is unheard of. It's just incredibly small work. But um, I grew up, you know, sleeping under these amazing quilts from the 19 teens and 30s and 40s. And they were all made of different patchworks of calicoles and uh, novelty prints. And I remember just laying under the, the quilt with my twin sister and pointing out which novelty print or which calico was my favorite. And I think that the, um, the obsession with vintage textiles and vintage clothing started at that point with me under my uh, grandma's quilts. So when I became 15 years old and I became a swing dancer, you know, because there's just not a lot to do in Humboldt County when you're 15 years old. So you go to the Moose Lodge and you learn how to swing dance. Um, I started uh, dressing the part. And um, that was back when you could find really amazing vintage at the Goodwill for, you know, five bucks a piece. Those were the days. Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at the whole piece here with the shoes that are all specially made. But the coat, you, you saw it and you had to wait how long? So, so nothing haunts you like the vintage that you don't buy. Yeah. That is an adage yeah. that vintage uh, collectors use. And I saw this coat at Rax in Sacramento, and it was up the street from my twin sister's house. And on the at the time, I was on a budget, so I didn't buy it. And then I, I regretted it, and I regretted it for about three years. And I kept going back to Rax to just see on the off chance if it were there, um, and it wasn't. What? 
uh, they had apparently put it away. I'd been visiting in the summertime and Sacramento in the summer is very hot. Yeah. Um, so no one would buy a wool coat, presumably, although I was certainly looking for it. So I finally went back and it was there and I bought it just as quickly as I could and I was delighted to have it. So, so w what exactly am I looking at here? This, this what coat? you're looking at is um, a, a 1940s wool swing coat and it has little um, uh, prong set rhinestones and pearls and studs in the shape of snowflakes. It's so beautiful. Thank you. So, and then we you so you, we used to like pick one piece and then build the yes. whole uh, everything around it. So where 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 does the design come from when where as it starts? Absolutely. Um, well, I'll just find one piece that I'm absolutely fascinated. Sometimes it's a hat. Sometimes it's shoes. Sometimes it's a suit, and I will build from there. And I'm a fan of really bold, bright primary colors. Um, I am obsessed with novelty prints, but I've also um, truly obsessed with more nautical style fashions. Uh -huh. So, you know, once you amass enough red and navy blue and, and white, it all kind of works together. And I really love interjecting um, color blocking or pops of color into, you know, uh, you know more uh, uh, monochromatic outfit. So um, I find that very gratifying and fun. And, and I think that one of the things that actually sets me apart as a pinup is the fact that I'm able to self style and use all of these really small details that make um, you know, my, more, my work a little bit more interesting for a judge on a pageant stage or, or for a photographer. Uh, how often are there uh, contests? How, you know, how, 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 how active do, do you stay at this? Sure. Um, so pinup modeling um, and pinup can be taken in a number of uh, different directions. Yeah. There is there are pinup pageants, um, which actually happen quite frequently, just sort of surrounding the the car show uh, calendar. You know, from maybe early spring through late fall, um, and they happen all over California. In fact, all over the country. Um, I was actually recently in December in Yokohama, where I won a prestigious title. Cool. Um, <laughs> which was not everywhere. I, thought pinup would take me, but it was one of the greatest joys of my life to do it. So you can do that. You can also um, uh, pinup model for print or modern pinup co uh, clothing companies or uh, pinup uh, photography and calendars. And, and I do will, all will, of Will that. you have an agent for this or will you, how, how, how's, how does the career run? I mean, how, how's, how do you keep this all together? I have a number of photographers that I work closely with. Um, who uh, will say, I have um, an amazing, uh, you know, 1957 Bel Air that I want to shoot that a specific classic car or hot rod builder who's big in, the, in that world um, wants to have shot for a specific magazine. They'll contact me. They'll ask me to pull wardrobe and I'll, I'll meet them there to do that. So now let's go to, to hair. Did you know yes. about hair before you found the clothes? Hair, what, hair is an ongoing battle. Uh, <laughs> a, a battle against wind and a battle against time. So I did know some things about vintage hair just from swing dancing, like your traditional like 1940s, 1930s Rita Hayworth style wet set, you know, with, with rollers. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've learned more styles as I've gone on. Mm -hmm. And there is definitely an advantage for people who want to get into pinup to learn how to self style and do their own hair, do their own makeup, do their own wardrobe. I, I mean, this is a whole production. Thank it, you. It, it, it's so cool. And there was a whole production the other day. So how many how many looks do you have? It's like putting on a show. E sure. e each look is a, you know, the, you, you don't have, you know, you don't buy, you, you don't put this together off the rack. It is a form of performance art. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so I have a ridiculous, uh, I have three vintage closets, much to my husband's chagrin. I tend to trend mostly in the 30s and 40s style of pinup, veering mm -hmm. into the 50s. Mm -hmm. Occasionally I'll do something 60s if it's really sculptural and structural and uh, you know the shoot or the car calls for that. But mostly I hang right around the 30s and 40s type of look. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I just sort of, uh, you know, if I'm working with a photographer, I'm asking them what color the car is. I'm asking them if, if we're shooting inside or out. I'm asking them if, if they want something glam or more every day and I'm kind of uh, adjusting from there. Do you do boats too? I do, yes. <laughs> of course you do. Absolutely. <laughs> Anyone with the, this quantity of nautical wardrobe could, could not yeah, avoid yeah. doing boats. So that was, that just sounds so much fun. So let's, let's talk about um, uh, textiles. And Absolutely. What do, you, what do you know now that you didn't know? 
I know how to clean almost any stain that you could possibly imagine, oh, including something. those that are 80 years old. Yeah. I've had some dresses that I was convinced, uh, you know, had a very good time in their heyday and possibly went to every, you know, gin soaked juke joint in New Orleans. Um, so then you're kind of wearing living history in a weird I am. way. I am, yes. I mean, it, it must be very boring for you to put on a contemporary thing that has no ghosts living in it. It is. And you know, it's so funny that you mentioned that because my mom used to refer to me as a hermit crab because it was almost, you know, as if I would see the evidence of human interaction with a garment or a piece of jewelry and that would make me, you know, desire it more. That makes it, uh, you know, the little imperfections, the evidence of human use make it more desirable to me. For Like, for example, um, I purchased a vintage sweater this weekend, um, a cardigan that was uh, hand knit Irish wool. And the, my most favorite thing happened to me, which is that I put my hand into the pocket of the cardigan the first time I wore it. And I came out with a card and it was a little note from the woman who knit it in 1979 with her name and the size of the sweater and the county she lived in in Ireland. Oh, wow. And I love finding old things in purses and old things in pockets, like a, you know, a movie a theater stub mm. or a dance card. Um, I love that. People had a lot of fun in these things. They really did. And, and, the, and, and just the whole, uh, just the whole fun of this. It's, it's uh, such good fun. Well, people will, will smile when they see it. And people don't necessarily recognize vintage. No, not necessarily. They're, they're wildly drawn to it, but they yeah. don't really understand, you know, necessarily the, the era that, that it comes from, unless the person is maybe a little bit older. I've gotten uh, one of my most favorite compliments is you look just like my mother. And it's, you know, usually delivered by an older gentleman. And he's telling me that I dressed just like his mother from the 40s or the 50s. Well, you have to remember in the 40s and the 50s, Hollywood, classic Hollywood created the mythos. Yes. So people look, there's not so much glamour alive anymore. Glamour, I agree. Glam, glamour is not a look that you see around you. Uh, it's not because, again, the movies aren't glamorous. And, and, right. and that was the one... That was the one art form everybody focused on. That was a popular art. Is 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 the movies? So people had Rita Hayward. <laughs> and, and once you've had Rita Hayworth, I yeah. mean, who can follow yeah. Rita Hayworth? Yeah, just seeing glamour, whether they know any historical idea or not historical idea, it it stands out. Yes. And and those. Um, like you, you wore that that dress the other day, and it had like a, a full-on story in it. Yes. You know, in, in these fabrics, and these fabrics are just so magical. They're magical, and they last, um, and they're finished with all of these little, you know, finishes that fast fashion doesn't use anymore. Um, you know, we have this disposable fashion culture these days that it's filled with plastics. It's meant to be obsolete. It's meant to wear out. And I love vintage clothing because it's, it was meant to last. It was meant to be mended, uh, particularly the shoes. And um, the fabrics are just unique. You cannot find them anymore. Um, you can't find wool of this weight. You can't find um, one of my favorite fabrics that the, that dress was made of was um, called cold rayon. And it's a specific weave of rayon that feels actually feels cool to the touch when you wow. touch it. So it's, it's just they're just a joy to to wear both visually and, and physically. When did synthetics uh, start coming in in the late 40s? When was the advent of, of synthetic? Fabrics? Sure. Well, that's a, that is such a good question. Um, arguably, rayon is yeah. um, the beginning of the synthetic fabrics. It's what you would call a pseudo synthetic in mm. that it is part wood fiber. And that came into, uh, I believe, advent in the 1940s when um, they needed, they could no longer use silk. They were using silk for parachutes for the war, for effort. The war effort. It's the war effort so, brought in the synthetics. Right, so we saw nylon and rayons become more popular. The classic Hawaiian shirts, what, what are those years? Oh my goodness, the classic Aloha shirts actually date back to uh, arguably the late 30s, early 40s. And, and is this to do with synthetics as well? Or Yes, those were predominantly cold rayon and then cottons later. There was, um, a famous um, uh, textile maker named Alfred Shaheen 
in uh, Hawaii in the 1940s who popularized the Aloha shirt. Shaheen fabrics are still highly, highly sought after for their, their prints. Um, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, and his daughter actually still maintains an archive where you can learn more about those textiles, but it was Shaheen's, it was uh, Watamol's. Um, I do the Watamol family. Yes, I did you know, really? Yeah, I knew Gunu Watamol. Wow. I went beavers of Hawaii. So I happen wow. to have a, quite my... a collection of, of, old, of 1940s and 50s cold rayon sarongs. Oh, wow. Um, that are uh, Watamol's or um, Kamehameha's. This is just fabulous. And then sort of the reaction that you just sort of get, uh, you, you know, I mean, what's life like as Brady Page? What's life like when I'm dressed as Brady Page? Um, I'm just so much, you know, I'm much more visible. And this is maybe, you know, as in my 40s, a way to avoid becoming invisible as so many women do. Yeah. Um, but the, I, I get three reactions. You know, the first one is, oh, you look like my mother, which is a lovely, um, a lovely compliment. Um, little, little girls ask me if I'm a princess. That's, that's Which, cool. The most endearing thing ever. And then some people ask me if I'm, if I'm dressed up for a costume party. And, and my response to that is that I'm, I'm dressed for a movie that's based on my life. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, I don't, it just, I, when I saw it the other day, it didn't register as vintage. It registers as looking right. It, was, it suits I, me. It, it, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it just, I, it's like, oh, I, I got, it looked glamorous. It looked like a look. I just, uh, I just, I just loved everything about it. I just resonated with it. And, but, but I didn't have, you know, any sensation that it's old or, you know, or uh, it just, it just, there was suddenly glamour in the world again. It's, it really is a, a special magic. I love hearing that. Um, I, I love hearing it. I feel glamorous when I wear it. Um, I, I become a ham. I'm a little bit of a different person. I'm, I'm already an extrovert. I become an extreme and, and, extrovert and there, when I wear And it's funny because it's, it's, it's the, the, the idea of it, it's, it's not as sultry as it is. There's a lot no, of humor with it. There's a ton of humor there's with a, it. Yeah, it is, there is humor with it. And, and that's what makes it, it's, it's, it's not as threatening as it is just like kind of looking at art. It is wearable art and that is what I love the most about it. Absolutely. I'm Mark Bear. You're watching the Your Town Show. I'm with Brady Page, and look at that. Wow. <laughs> what a pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, Joe, we got to have a picture.